Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk to a painter that I follow on Instagram. And the funny thing is, is they're not just a painter. They actually just kind of started painting, which is one of the things we talk about. Because while I was following them, I knew them as a musician. And suddenly, their stuff on their Instagram account changed from music to paintings. And paintings where I'm like, I really like this. It's paintings that I was very impressed by. So I started follow or you know looking at more of the stuff and seeing what the person was doing. And the person is actually just kind of driving these paintings around and giving them to people that they know in different places in the Midwest. Uh, it's it, yeah, it's they are, they are also a woodworker. We talk about the history of how they got started, what they make, why they got involved in the music, why they started painting. And the reason they started painting was really someone just kind of gave them something and they're like, here, you want this? It's, it's, it's fun. And there's no reason why creating things shouldn't start that way. Uh, and that's what we talk about. And it's really just something they like doing. And we discuss all of that. Uh, and here's the show starting right now. Hey, I'm Ryan Hugland. I am a uh, musician, woodworker, uh, painter, graphic designer, just all around curious person. Apparently, yeah. The, what, you just couldn't think of one thing to do? You had to do them all? <laughs> yeah, I get really like, I don't know, I, I focus in on things really, really tightly for like six, eight months, and then I'm just, I got to do something else, you know? Okay. So, yeah. So are you saying that you actually just move on to different projects or do you ever go back and revisit? I guess I kind of want to know that. Uh, yeah, I go back and revisit for okay. sure. Um, you know, like woodworking is a good example. Uh, my father was a, a carpenter his whole career. So that's kind of how I got into woodworking. And, um, you know, I've, I've built all sorts of things around our house. And um, for a while I was building birdhouses and we did craft shows and like all sorts of things. And yeah, um, yeah, just I love to build stuff. And every once in a while, it just it gets to a point where it's like, all right, I'm just kind of over this for the moment. I'm uh -huh. going to move on to music now. And then six months, I'm way into music, you know? And right. this, luckily, I have these little facets, graphic design, painting. And like, I just keep jumping from one to one, which, which doesn't help like getting better at any of them. So <laughs> I feel like people who are like really dive into something, that's how you get like really, really good at it. But right. I don't know. It, it, keeps, it keeps me like going, you know? But it does kind of, uh, there, there are different... Uh, aspects and pluses and bonuses to that as well, because uh, I mean, I kind of dabbled in a lot of different stuff too. So I'll, I'll be able to meet somebody who does stuff and be really interested. And they're clearly more advanced than what I've done, but I can, right, sure. I can go like, I know what you're talking about though. And that's super right. fascinating. Like it's, it's yeah, it's, it's nice to have kind of knowledge of at least everything a little bit. Uh, Jack to of all be trades, master of none, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and to go back to the woodworking thing. Now, one, I would like to point out that I always am confused when I hear woodworking because my mind instantly goes, there are two types I know. Like there's the woodworking yeah. as in like, I'm going to build something useful like a canoe or a table. But then there's also yep. woodworking like, you know, I'm going to make art with it. And I know that both are possible at the same time. Which one would you say that you did more? I'm definitely the furniture canoe guy. Okay. For sure. All yeah. right. Uh, ca canoe's on my list, actually. Uh, I really want to build a canoe at some point. Why do we um, want to do that? Why? What, <laughs> that seems to be I, the big project. That was like the running thing on like Parks and Rec. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But I do, you know. And, uh -huh. um, but, so we moved from Madison to Hudson, Wisconsin. That's where we live now. Okay. And one of the, uh, when we sold our house in Madison, we, we had a single car garage. And it was a tuck under and like from the, the workbench to the garage door was like 11 feet. So I literally couldn't build a canoe. So, and my wife also, she's a metalsmith jeweler. So she's also creative and like makes things. And uh, so our high on our list for this house was like, we need a creative space. We need like a, an outbuilding or some sort of, you know, extra studio space where we can do these things. And uh, luckily 2020, when we moved up here, bought this house and it had a, it has a thousand square foot shop in the back. Mm -hmm. So we are like, we moved in and it's like painting, woodworking, metalsmith jewelry, jewelry making, like, and I can make like 10 canoes at once. So it's on the list. <laughs> yeah, it's I was going to say, now. but you haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't done it. You yet. say it, but you I'm won't not. do it. <laughs> it's on the list. <laughs> why Why go to uh, Hudson? Why, why did you end up going out there? Uh, so neither, uh, my wife and I were, we met in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm from North Dakota originally. Okay. Um, 
got married and we're like, we don't want to live in North Dakota. You know, we want to go somewhere else. So we took some weekends, went to some different cities. We went to Duluth, came back to my wife's from Minneapolis originally, uh, came to Minneapolis. And then uh, we're like, I don't know, we don't really want to live in either one of those. So on a whim, we went to Madison. Mm -hmm. And by the third day, we were like looking for apartments. And six months later, we moved there and loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then uh, we had a son. And we're like, oh, this is why people live by family because it's like super hard to, you know, oh, raise okay. a child with, with no help. So in 2019, sold our house, moved back up to Hudson, which is just across the river from like Stillwater, St. Paul. So, okay. What were you doing in Fargo in the first place? Both of you weren't from there. So that's, that's so interesting that you were both in like this place that you weren't from, you met, and then you right. came back to somewhere else that you're not from. <laughs> yeah. I, I get a, like a, like a 70 ridge. I love moving. I've lived in like, five different states. And, okay. You know, I just, I, I love it. I love the change of scenery. I, I, I would pick up tomorrow and move to Maine if we could, you know? So, so in um, living situations, it's very much like the, what you're working on situation. You just, I'm going to do this now. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you're connecting some weird dots here, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I guess. Um, so we, yeah, I was in Fargo. Uh, I grew up in Grand Forks, North Dakota and moved to Fargo. So it was kind of like the next big city. You know what I mean? Everybody that's moving, Somewhere in North Dakota, moved to Fargo. Okay. And and then from there, the logical next step is Minneapolis. And we kind of jumped that step. So we're like, oh, everybody moves to Minneapolis. My wife's from Minneapolis, so let's go somewhere else. And that's how we wound up in in Madison. Okay. And I was going to say, did you go there because the movie came out, which ironically does not actually take place mostly in Fargo. Like one Doesn't... scene takes place in Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it was, uh, I got a job there uh, and I moved there and, the music scene was much better there. We, uh, I was in a band in Grand Forks, and we played in Fargo all the time. So okay. it's kind of a, I kind of saw what was happening in Fargo. I was like, yeah, I'll move there. For and, sure. and it was only like an hour away from my hometown. So, and that does take me to where I was going to go next with this. So you said then you started doing music after the woodworking, but then I was like, well, you don't just pick up an instrument and go. Now I'm a musician. So what was your background? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. There's some people. Yeah. That, actually, I know lots of people that I could claim did that because it's like. You're no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) But uh, so how did you, uh, like, how did you end up learning to play instruments and play music? What was your background? Uh, So I've been a drummer for, I guess, 30 years now. I started when I was 12, 42 now. Um, You'd think I'd be better by now, but uh, (laughs) but the jumping around thing doesn't help with that. But, um, you know, I was talking to my wife about this the other day of how I started playing drums and it's a really weird story. So when I was about 12, me and my best friend at the time, who I still talk to today, I texted him this morning, Mike Whitmore. Uh, we were into like Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Megadeth, all that stuff at like the age of 12. You know, watching MTV and we're like, we should start a band, you know? And, and he's like, oh, I, my dad, like I have a guitar. My dad played guitar in college and he had like an old acoustic in the closet that he brought out. And so Mike was logically the guitarist. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you should play drums. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get a drum set. And, uh, you know, six months later after saving up, you know, my paper up money. I bought a drum set from my high school or my middle school geography teacher for 50 bucks. Wait, and, <laughs> from your middle school yeah. geography teacher? Yeah, it's weird. Weird. It's weird. Okay. Weird scene. Uh, and oddly enough, me and Mike never started a band together, but I would play drums every day for, I don't know, probably, I was probably six years because I started my first band when I was 18. I'd go home, play drums for hours, hours on end. That's what I thought. You know, I was watching all these, you know, MTV videos, and I was like, "These guys are really, really good." You got to practice every day for, you know, you got to be that good to play in a band, basically. Yeah. And finally, I joined my first band when I was eighteen, uh, just by, you know, visiting the local music shops. And the guitar player at the time was, I would go buy drumsticks, and he played guitar. He's around my age, and he's like, "Hey, you're a drummer? I need a drummer." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I'm a drummer." And we started a band, and lo and behold, like turns out you don't have to play drums for six years to join a band you know i was like <laughs> right. it was like all of a sudden all these dudes were like i started playing drums last week and i'm in a band now and i'm like what the hell you can do that like i had no idea i was gonna you say know? you started when and then you met someone when you were 18 like you did it yeah. that many years and I didn't actually six, have a band seven years by myself in the basement just banging it out oh. and but so all of a sudden I'm, we're playing shows around town and everybody's like who the hell is this kid are you new to town what's what's the deal and i'm like i've been playing in my mom you weren't on the scene and, or nothing not at all, <laughs> not at all. so it, it was a weird like awakening moment of like oh you don't have to be like a pro to like do stuff yeah you know? so i also yeah. like that when you got the idea to start a band you unknowingly went right into the one that costs the most and has the most oh, equipment to lug around. Brutal. 
absolutely brutal. The amount of symbols and drum heads I've bought over the years, I could own That's, like yeah. 20 Les Pauls. Like, oh my God, I'd be laced out. Like, no, and it's not even the fact that that's the equipment. It's that's also drum like drummers. It's like, why do you need more stuff? What are you going to do with these extra drums? Why do you keep buying more things? Right, right. <laughs> they yeah, go boom, yeah. boom, boom. And that's the job. But what I was getting at was, uh, uh, and in me, I feel like without knowing it, I was a little, a little bit more, I'm going to say entrepreneurial at it when I started in fourth grade, because sure. my friend was taking guitar lessons and another friend was taking guitar lessons. So it's like, Hey, I'm going to, we'll be guitar players. And then my other friend, his brother was already a bass player in a band. So he's like, I have access to bass equipment. And it's like, that's great. And I'm like, I don't have money or skills to buy any of this stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to be the singer. I have a Mr. Microphone that hooks up to a boom box. <laughs> right. And that was it. Right. And that, then I was in yeah. a band and I didn't have to do nothing. So <laughs> and suddenly, that's awesome. and that started my whole career. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. So you did that for a while. And then when you came back to Madison, were you still doing music or was that when you started doing uh, solo projects? Uh, yeah. So I, I was in a, a band in, in Madison. We, we would practice at the Madison Music Foundry uh, like oh, okay. twice a week. Um, we never played any shows, but we, we played for like three years. You know, we recorded a bunch of stuff. It was kind of our like, you know, guys bowling night kind of thing. You know, never, no real expectations. We were just getting together, playing music. Um, but that was kind of the last like band band I was really in. Okay. Yeah. And then you ended up doing an album that I want to say was all solo. Is that correct? Yeah. I recorded, played everything. Uh, recorded it all sang which is like oh my god i i hate it oh singing <laughs> tom you can have it oh it's the worst <laughs> well i'm, I'm just not i'm not good at it to go straight from drums to also play in the other instruments i mean you've got a nice collection of on the video you've got a nice collection of guitars behind you hanging there on the wall and you've clearly set up your own home studio so yep. while well, you say you hate it you have clearly invested time in it <laughs> i yeah I, I i the singing part is like oh, oh okay just, it Ew, well, you're not worst. required to sing. You don't have to have singing on everything. <laughs> you know, that, that, I, I thought about that. And, you know, I've, I've been, pl I've played guitar for about 15 years and bass, you know, here and there, whatever. So I can, I can figure, I, like, I have that part kind of figured out. You know what okay. I mean? But the last part of this was like the singing. And I was like, if I'm really going to do it, like, I should probably write lyrics and like do the thing I'm not good at, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why it's it a did good it. way to look I mean, at it. I mean, it was torture. I mean, it was the worst. Like, it was, it's the weakest part of the album, too, and in my opinion, you know. But it, but record, making a instrumental album, I think, would have been easy. I mean, not easy, but like easier. Yeah, you know. So I, it's funny too because uh, currently I'm working on a project where it's it started out as mostly instrumental, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll put some lyrics on this as well. And then it was half and half. And now I'm looking at it where when the instrumental stuff comes, it's like, God, it just really doesn't do anything. Or, you know, it right. seems too long. And and so with lyrics, for some reason, putting lyrics on it makes it not seem as long. But sometimes that's cool. I don't know. There are people who do like instrumental stuff. There are entire bands that people follow on tour specifically because one of their songs is 20 minutes long, you know, or all of them are. It's, I yeah. mean, it's, I mean, I guess it's a, point of taste i mean most of my music is under two minutes <laughs> so right i clearly right, yeah. have a short attention span <laughs> right yeah I, I totally agree you know and it was, it was that was that was the part part for me is like i should just really try to do something that i'm not good at you know okay. not that i'm you know an ex awesome guitar player or anything but like i can do it you know where singing and writing lyrics is just something i'd never done before and yeah. just had like just pushed away and pushed away and i'm like i should just really do it you know okay so, and one of the things that, uh, I, I mean, we follow each other online. Uh, I, I know you on Instagram. And one of the things that, uh, I wanted to talk to you about was your paintings that you've been doing and you've been, you've been actually, have you been traveling? I'm going to jump ahead a little bit just cause I started this question already. Have you been traveling around giving them to people? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that is, all yeah. right, we'll get to that then. Cause I was curious and I was like, is that what he's doing? Um, so tell me first about, uh, well, how would you explain the paintings that you do? Uh, it's basically abstract scrape painting. Yeah. Um, uh, it, you know, you put a bunch of blobs on a, on a canvas and push them around with a scraper, you know, is what I'm doing. Um, I've done a few with, with, with 
some brushes, but it's mostly just like throw literally throwing painting paint at a canvas and seeing what sticks. You know, okay. so, not not metaphorically. You're talking actually yeah, doing it. Okay, actually doing it. Yeah. So what prompted yeah. this idea? You know, I during the pandemic, um, there's a I don't know if you know the band Lucero at all. It sounds familiar. They're from Memphis, kind of like alt country. Um, their guitar player, who I've kind of like befriended online, um, also does like painting. And during the pandemic, he was doing like a book club where he'd like read a chapter from a book every night. And there was like oh, really? a small, yeah, it was really cool on Instagram. He would do like live things and it grew to be this like 12 to 15 person kind of audience. And we kind of all got to know each other. What books was and, he reading? Because for some reason, my mind instantly goes to like bedtime stories. <laughs> no, no, right. he was doing like, uh, like Confeder Confederacy of Dunces and like, um, oh, he did like six different books. I can't even remember them all now, but uh they, they were pretty good stuff. I, uh, mostly stuff I hadn't heard before. Okay. So yeah. Um, so it got, got to be this, this, this little crew and he like, we talked back and forth, all of us. And uh, he, he showed us like his painting, his paintings and like his painting room. And um, I was like, man, you know, like it's art has kind of always been part of my life, but like, I've never done painting before. And I was like, Let's just do it, you know, just to see what happens. Um, and it just so happened like, six months later we were visiting a, a friend in madison and in her basement she had an easel like a really nice like oak easel and our friend laura and i was like hey you have an easel down here are you painting and she's like no a friend of mine gave it to me you know i'm never going to use it and i'm like oh you should and she's like no you should take it if you're interested you should take it and i was like i'm not going to take your easel and she's like you would do me be doing me a favor if you took it so i took this easel home and it was like giving me permission to do it you know basically and yeah away i went and you had already kind of been toying with the idea or that literally was like, gave you the idea to like, okay, well maybe I'll use it. Cause that would be rude to take it home and not use it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd already been thinking about it. I'm like, man, I should maybe get an easel or I should get like some canvases and try it. And that was like, the point is like, oh, well maybe I should do this. Like now I have an easel out of okay. nowhere. Like, so this is a been, weird kind of circumstance. Had you been painting before that? No, no. Okay. No. It's literally, I've been painting for like six months. What about, okay, did you research at all? Because I do have to say, when I saw it, I mean, I could tell that they were, like you said, they're, they're uh, splotch and drag type paintings and sure. you do them in shapes. And uh, you've also done some multi-layering and uh, you've incorporated spray paint into it, which I want to ask about. But yep. the color and the layout and actually the way that you've got the shape, it, it's, it's, I like it. You know, Thanks, I can't, Thanks, I can't think I of a better it. way to put it, but it's just like, a, so for you to just go, I just picked it up one day and did it. I mean, that just makes me hate you instantly, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I paint over a lot of them too. Like I probably okay. like a third of them or, or, or two thirds of them are painted over and a third of them I, I'll keep, you know, so it's a lot of trial and error, but yeah, it's fun. It's real fun. Yeah. And so what, what is the process when you start one of these projects? Like, how do you get started or do you picture it? Or do you just really go, I'm going to paint something today. Let's see what happens. Like, how, how do you do this? See what happens. You okay. know, the spray paint is basically, I've noticed that if you spray paint a canvas, a color, it's a nice coverage. And I started like, you know, painting them with a paintbrush and you'd see the lines and be kind of blotchy. But like, if you spray paint the canvas, I've noticed that it's like really even. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the spray paint comes in is the, the background color. Okay. And then I'll just pick some colors and drop, you know, drop them around the canvas and scrape away. See okay. what happens. Now, did yeah. you at least like spend five minutes on YouTube going like, I want to do this type of thing. Let's see how other people do it. And you go, okay, I get it. I mean, yeah, give there's, me some, something. There's, some, <laughs> there's some people on Instagram that I follow, uh, okay. some artists that, that are doing similar things. Um, there's, there's one guy in particular, Drip Throw. He's, he's an artist on Instagram that, uh, that he does familiar. really, really, really big. I think he's in like Idaho or something. Okay. Uh, does really big, like, like four foot by six foot paintings, like enormous but his whole process is scraping, you know, and, and he's been really helpful. Like I've asked him several questions about things and he's been really awesome and helpful. And All right. uh, so yeah, I just went, went and got some paint and what the hell, you know? Okay. Now are you doing it in acrylic? So I'm using like straight up house paint, you know, oh, okay. like from, from Home Depot, like latex paint. Was it's that cheap? Was that because you already had it or you were just like, I'm going to go get some paint? Ah, exactly. Home Depot is the place. <laughs> <laughs> I already had it. I already had a bunch of it. And uh, that the same artist, uh, he, that's all he uses on his huge paintings. Um, 
he's like, yeah, you can get, you know, these little testers for like five bucks and you can oh. get a bunch of different colors. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the way it went. Because they are for- very bold colors. I will say that. That's one of the things that draws me in too, along with the uh, the shapes that you're doing. The colors are also very vibrant. So I, that actually kind of makes a little bit of sense that they're house paint because, yeah. you know, it, house, house paint is literally like we need a bold color. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's so weird because like, the finishing of it, like the varnish at the end, there's like, you can buy the Liquitex stuff, but it's like really expensive. And I was doing some research research and I'm like, oh, this is basically like water-based, uh, you know, polyurethane stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was looking into it and I'm like, it's the same stuff, you know, and you can buy a gallon <laughs> of it at Home Depot for, for next to nothing. So I'm like, it's, I think it's part of my like construction, you know, woodworking background of like, go to Home Depot, I get my stuff, you know, right. <laughs> like that's, so I, everything I'm just getting from Home Depot and like the scrapers are like drywall scrapers. And okay, I have, I had a bunch of like concrete tools that I got from my dad and I'm using some of those for like texture and stuff. And it's just a weird blend of like construction stuff and painting. Okay. And yeah. you also talked about the different sizes, but you said you started out with this easel. Now with the bigger sizes, is it a huge easel or like I don't really I don't really even use the easel much anymore. That's what I was wondering. Because to me, I yeah. picture it all as like you do it on the ground, like you know, uh yeah. Jackson Pollock style. Yeah, I, I put it on saw horses again. Uh and stuff. I put it on horses do it that way. Uh but the easel was like when I first started, I was like using paintbrushes and like trying to paint stuff and like, you know, dripping and trying all sorts of different techniques. And I'm like, Oh, just, I suck at art. You know, like (laughs) this is terrible. Uh, and then, uh, I just tried one laying down and scraping the paint around and right out of the bat, it was like, Oh, that's really cool. Like it just happened. Okay. And I've just kind of done that from, from here on out. Okay. And then yeah. now I want to get back to the you take. So what I've been seeing on Instagram is you going dropped off another painting today and you've been saying this one's spoken for, but it just seems like you're kind of going to people, you know, in different places and giving them yeah. paintings. Are you selling them or are you just showing up and going surprise? Here's a painting. Like how's uh, that working? Basically anybody who reaches out gets a painting. You okay. know what I mean? If they're like, Hey, that's really cool. I'm like, you can have it. You can have it on your wall tomorrow. You know? Um, and everybody that I've talked to has been like, how can I pay you? Like, what do you want for it? And so many of my projects over the years, whether it be like music, woodworking has always gone down the path of like making money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, that's the part where it's like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. You know, like now I got to ship it. Now I got to do this. Now I got to come up with pricing and like all that stuff. And yeah, since I started this, I'm like, it's a hobby. You know what I mean? Like people have golf. I have painting. You know what I mean? It costs money. That's what it does, you know? Uh, but if it ends up on somebody's wall, like that's great. That's awesome. Okay. So I've just been giving them away. But at this point, people are like, I want to pay you. So I'm like, Bandcamp style, pay what you want. You know, here, here's my Venmo, whatever, $5, $100, whatever. doesn't matter, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, I've been giving them out anybody who wants one. Okay. And so while you're doing this, do you have any plans on like showing it in places? I mean, do you aspire to do that? I mean, I know you're saying... Right now, it's just kind of a hobby. Is and right. not that that's wrong. I'm not saying that it is. Uh, I'm just curious. It's uh, while doing this, is it just going to be something where like, and then I'm going to stop for a while, and then maybe I'll come back to it again, or is this something where you're uh, like, well, you know, I'm taking it slow, but I would like to do something with it, or are you know, because you have other things that you do, so it's not like right. you have to put your main focus into this. You know, I haven't really even thought about it. Okay, uh, it's, it's just been like. Uh, just a hobby, you know, like it, it's, it's filling that gap right now between word working and music. You know? so like, that's basically what it is at this point. Um, I mean, it's, it's been really interesting. Like it's taking more of my time. I feel like, and like, I've been more, maybe cause it's new, you know, but like, right. We'll, we'll, our son will go to bed and at like nine o'clock at night. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to the studio and I'll be out there for a couple hours. You know, like that's right. not something I would necessarily do for woodworking. Cause I'm, first of all, you get dirty and then you got to go shower and whatnot. But like, I've been finding well, myself doing all the drilling. The kids are sleeping, you know, right. same with drums. <laughs> right. You can't be like, all right, kids are asleep. Right. I'm going to go play some drums now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been a really nice gap thing. And uh, eventually, I mean, the, the thing that I foresee being the problem, and I'm not sure what artists do about this, but like, what do you do when you get like a hundred paintings? Like, what do you do when you have all these paintings? Like right. what do you do with them? And I've kind of had a revolving door. So I've had like, you know, five to 10 paintings hanging around in the basement, but like there hasn't been a huge glut of paintings yet. Yeah. So at some point I'll be like, what am I going to do with these paintings? You yeah. Know? 
Are um, they are they stretched on canvas or how are yeah, they? Yeah, I've just been like buying the straight up canvases from like Michaels. You okay. Know? Well, and uh, the, that's why I was asking because I actually have asked that question to some people and one person uh, just stopped stretching the canvas. They would roll it up. So that's how they would save the paintings. And then when someone bought them or they gave it to someone, then they would stretch it on the canvas was the answer someone gave me. Man. And that's and I was like, that's actually pretty brilliant. But to me, uh, at, at first, and I trusted this person because they were a fine arts painter because I'm like, wouldn't that ruin it? And they're like, no, it's, it's, it doesn't at all. So that's one way. And I thought I'd pass it along because you, li I literally wow. asked someone that exact same question once. And that was the answer they gave me because they had hundreds of paintings and I was like, where wow. are you keeping them? And they were huge. So that's, what do you, what do you do with them? Like, what do you, like, how long do you hold on to them? Like I being totally new to this, like, I have no idea what you do with paintings you've had for a year to five, 10 years. Like, what do you do with that painting? Well, and they were also uh, putting them, they were selling them online as well. So they were, they were available in different areas. They were also, uh, you know, still submitting their stuff to galleries. So when they would have a gallery Got show, it. they'd go stay in a gallery for like six months, stuff like that. So they, there were different things like that. And that was one of the things I was getting to as well is like, do you plan on having your stuff just put somewhere trying to get it somewhere like that? Yeah. You know, maybe, um, again, I haven't really thought about it. Okay. I just have paintings stacking up, but yeah, I mean, I'd be open to that for yeah. sure. But you haven't really submitted your stuff to people right now. It's just kind of oh, friends no. and family. Okay. No, not just on Instagram, you know, and like anybody wants a painting, like get a hold of me. We'll, we'll get you a painting. Yeah. And yeah. so before you were talking about how, you know, you were doing it at night and, uh, you know, you still do the woodworking and the music when you're doing these projects, how do you, manage the different projects that you're, you know, give them the same amount of attention. How do you manage them all and still feel like, you know, you're achieving what you need to achieve with all. Cause I, I fall into this a lot too. I'll find myself going, I'm spending way too much time on this one thing and I have other projects I need to work on. And it's like, right. Yeah. It's how do you manage that for me? I mean, they're all hobbies at this point. You know what I mean? So like, I don't have any deadlines. I don't have any, like anybody waiting for the next thing. Right. So, uh, you know, I can, focus on music hard for six months and just be like, I'm over it. I'm moving on, you know, mm -hmm. like, and then I'll go out to the shop for six months and like come back to this and realize all those songs are trash and they're going to end up, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like it, 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 I just focus on something until I'm sick of it and then move on to the next thing. Okay. What do you do with the woodworking stuff you make? Is that also just for yourself or do you do it for other people? Yeah. You know, I used to do like woodcut signs and stuff and, and birdhouses and do craft shows and whatnot, but, at this point, it's just for myself. You know, I've built stuff around the house. I've built tables and built-ins around our house and uh, things for our sunroom. But that that seems more like a job once you start selling it because yeah. now you're like, you know, it's, I don't know. I, it's It takes all the fun out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've just been focused on stuff for, our, for ourself, basically. Okay. Yeah, I know one person that I spoke to a while back who um, they weren't necessarily making furniture, but they were re what's the word um refurbishing furniture oh yeah okay yeah for sure. yeah they were they were like you know uh fixing it and then also doing enhancements to it or um making it prettier i can't think of, i don't know the terminology well enough so, but you get where i'm <laughs> going with this yeah and yeah. um uh they were doing the the shows and everything and lugging the stuff around and it was just like the because furniture's big, it's heavy. It's you know right. wood. Wood is heavy. So uh, what they eventually did is they, they just were like, "I'm going to get my own place and have people come to me." So they opened yeah. a shop and had people. Have you ever thought like you're in an area? That's the beauty of places like Hudson or some of the uh, more well. It, Hudson's a rural area, right? Like I mean, I, th I think we're technically part of the Minneapolis metro area. Okay, like okay, you us are. to us to downtown Minneapolis is like three minutes. Okay, well in. And that's even that would still work like places like that open themselves up to like on the weekends you go, hey, you know, I open up my garage. You can come by and look at stuff between like one and four. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, yeah. it, it lends that, to that, that, you know, that is something that I've thought about having the the studio in the back. You know, it was basically the guy we bought the house from was a car collector. So it was like a three car. Oh, garage neat. With, yeah. Yeah. So it, was, it had like carpet in it that we had to tear out. It and had like carpet of, in it? Yeah, the whole thing was carpeted. It, it, it wasn't a workshop. It was like a hangout with beer signs and like, oh, whole, like there's like. Oh, well, that's actually know, like, cool then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have any collector cars, but we are creative people. So we tore it all out, built some workbenches, and now it's a working studio. And 
that's something I think would be cool to like come and check it out. You know, come yeah. hang out. Like, you know, being that my wife is also a creative person, does creative things. And, right. Um, yeah, that, that would be cool for sure. Yeah. And not that I'm saying you have to do that. It, I literally was just like brainstorming out loud and realized that oh, I was yeah. going, you should do this with your house. Like, do whatever you want with your stuff. Don't listen to me. <laughs> no, it, I've thought about it. It's, it's a cool idea. It could, it could be really cool. Okay. <laughs> so why did you decide to start even putting your stuff on Instagram uh, if you were really just doing it as a hobby? Not that you couldn't, but I'm just always curious to see when people decide to start showing the work publicly, especially since you were clearly saying, you know, I'm not a painter. I'm just trying this stuff out. So, right. you know. What, yeah. Um, what made I you take started, that leap? The painting's piling up, basically. You know, I was like, well, what am I going to do with these? And uh, my hope was that somebody would want them, you know, like not to make money, but just like, does anybody want these paintings? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So that that was kind of the the hope was like, move these things on and and keep making more paintings. Okay. Now, with all the things that you've been doing over these past few years with the different uh, things you've been trying out, different things that you still work on and creative things that you're doing, what are some of the things that you'd say you learned? Uh, or even if, as you think back on it, what's something where you're like, I, th- th- it kind of taught me this or I've learned this from doing this or you know, any tips that you could give people from just trying out these different mediums and, and creative ventures? Is there anything yeah, that comes to mind? Yeah, you know, Finishing a project, you know, is like finishing a painting, finishing an album, finishing a song. Like, I know I was just saying, like, I scrap things and move on. But like, that that's a really big thing for me. Like, it may not be perfect, but if you finish it and move on, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You can like, like move past it and start start fresh and start something new. Is the painting perfect? No. Do you like it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, it's done. Next one. You know what I mean? Like, not being okay with like having things not perfect, I think, is is kind of something I've, I've tried to embody and like try to do over the years is like just finish it and then move on. Okay. Yeah. It's, that is a tough thing to do. Uh, yeah. Removing, removing the brush from your hand is, is always a tough right. thing. I, Knowing when to stop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's too much and you can't take it away. Sometimes it's not <laughs> enough and you're like, I could have done better. God, even I'm giving myself anxiety right now, even just <laughs> ta- thinking about it with you. <laughs> and uh, what are some of the things that y- you would like to do in the future? Or some of the things that, like future plans that you have, like wh- what, what have you been thinking about? You know, I'm, I'm just curious about so many things, you know, if it wasn't painting, it would be, you know, leather work seems pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like stained glass making. Like, there's so many things like pottery. Like, I'm just, there's so many things I'll never get to, but I'm curious about all of them, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to stick on painting for a while for sure, but um, I don't know what the next thing is. You know, it, it's, it's always something for sure. <laughs> It's always so, so you're saying I should keep an eye on your Instagram account for leather I working guess. projects. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Oh, and uh, if people wanted to check out your stuff and what you've been doing, where would you suggest that they go to do that? Uh, mainly my Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Um, it's Moss Weedo is the, the name of my handle at an Instagram, I guess. Is that the handle? Yeah. Um, at Moss Weedo. Yeah. Where did M-O-S-S- you come up with that name? W E D O S <laughs> that that's what my uh, album, the like artist name of my album was, was okay. Moss Weedo. And it was from my son when he was like three years old, he couldn't say mosquito. <laughs> so he, he kept saying, there's a Moss Weedo, there's a Moss Weedo. And I always thought it was the funniest thing. So I just, that I is adorable. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also just cause I asked you the question while you were spelling it, it's M O S S W E D O. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I asked a question yep. while you were spelling it. No worries. <laughs> and then I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad we finally got the yeah. chance to connect, uh, you know, verbally. <laughs> it's a pleasure, man. <laughs>